Venezuelan migrant followed a woman from the UIC Halstead Blue Line station near Harrison and Morgan Street. Republican governor of Texas says this situation has driven him to fly migrants out of his state and into Chicago. Here, Lori Lightfoot sending a letter to Texas Governor Greg Abbott urging him to stop sending migrants here to Chicago. Let me also say this. Shame on Governor Abbott. We can still be welcoming, but we can also welcome with parameters. They rob us, they harass us. Case of Elvis Hernandez Pernalit. The recent incident involving a Venezuelan migrant, Elvis Hernandez Pernalit, has sparked concerns and raised questions about public safety and the vetting process for asylum seekers in the United States. Hernandez Pernalit, also known as Luis Guevara, stands accused of physically attacking a woman on the University of Illinois Chicago campus earlier this month, adding to a series of disturbing allegations against him. The incident reportedly occurred on March 16, around 8 p.m., when Hernandez Pernalit allegedly followed the woman from the UIC Halstead Blue Line station and attempted to grab her from behind. He then proceeded to steal her belongings and physically attack her before fleeing the scene. It's important to note that the victim in this case was not affiliated with UIC as a student or staff member, according to campus police. These troubling events have prompted City Alderman Ray Lopez to voice concerns about the vetting process for migrants and asylum seekers. He emphasized the need for improved coordination between local and federal authorities to ensure thorough background checks and assessments of individuals entering the country. Lopez's remarks underscore the broader debate surrounding immigration policies and the balance between humanitarian assistance and public safety. Adding to the gravity of the situation, court documents reveal that Hernandez Pernalit is also implicated in another attack on a woman, whom he allegedly followed from a train station. A migrant from Venezuela is facing charges accused of attacking and sexually assaulting women. Sylvia and Terrence, a judge, has denied pretrial release for that man. A Venezuelan migrant followed a woman from the UIC Halstead Blue Line station near Harrison and Morgan Streets. Luis Hernandez Pernalete, who also goes by Luis Guevara, has been charged with criminal sexual abuse. The charges against him include criminal physical misuse, aggravated battery and strangulation, robbery and attempted robbery, reflecting the severity and scope of his alleged offenses. Furthermore, Hernandez Pernalit's criminal history appears to be extensive, with prior incidents indicating a pattern of behavior that raises serious concerns. On March 9, he was reportedly observed stealing merchandise from a TJ Maxx store before fleeing the scene. This pattern of criminal behavior, particularly targeting victims in transit locations, such as train stations, underscores the need for proactive measures to address public safety risks. In response to the latest allegations and Hernandez Pernalit's history of offenses, a judge has denied his request for pretrial release. The decision reflects the gravity of the situation and the potential danger posed by allowing him back into the community pending trial. It also highlights the judiciary's role in prioritizing public safety and holding individuals accountable for their actions. The case of Elvis Hernandez Pernalit raises broader questions about the effectiveness of existing immigration and asylum policies in safeguarding communities and identifying potential threats. While the U.S. has a long-standing tradition of offering refuge to those fleeing persecution, recent incidents underscore the importance of robust screening processes and mechanisms for monitoring individuals once they are admitted into the country. Ensuring public safety requires a multifaceted approach that balances humanitarian concerns with the need to protect communities from harm. This includes enhancing coordination between federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies to share information and track individuals with criminal histories or concerning behavior patterns. It also entails investing in resources for trauma-informed support services for victims and survivors of attack. Addressing the root causes of migration, such as economic instability and political unrest in countries like Venezuela, is crucial for preventing future incidents and providing viable alternatives for individuals seeking asylum. By addressing these underlying factors, policymakers can mitigate the risks associated with irregular migration 
and create safer, more inclusive communities for all residents. The case of Elvis Hernandez Pernalit underscores the complex challenges inherent in immigration and asylum policies, and the imperative of prioritizing public safety. As policymakers and stakeholders grapple with these issues, it is essential to strike a balance between humanitarian assistance and proactive measures to prevent harm and ensure accountability for those who perpetrate crimes. Public Safety and Immigration Policy In recent weeks, the University of Illinois Chicago campus has been rocked by a disturbing incident involving a Venezuelan migrant, Elvis Hernandez, who stands accused of physically attacking a woman after following her from a train station. The gravity of the situation was compounded by the revelation that Hernandez had allegedly committed a similar attack on another woman. These events have reignited debates surrounding public safety and immigration policy, prompting calls for enhanced measures to protect communities and ensure accountability. On the evening of March 16, Hernandez, also known as Luis Guevara, reportedly targeted a woman near the UIC Halstead Blue Line station. Court documents detail how he approached the victim, wrapping his arms around her neck and torso before robbing her and carrying out the attack. The brazen nature of the attack sent shockwaves across the UIC campus and beyond, prompting concerns among students and residents about their safety in the area. While the victim in this case was not affiliated with UIC, the incident prompted a campus-wide alert and underscored the need for vigilance among the university community. Alderman Ray Lopez, representing the 15th Ward, highlighted broader concerns about public safety, particularly regarding individuals whose backgrounds may not be fully known. He emphasized the importance of coordination between local and federal authorities to vet asylum seekers and ensure transparency regarding their criminal histories. Criminal activity that these small number of migrants are doing would never be allowed or permissible for someone who was, say, on the DACA register. Migrants who arrive in Chicago on buses from Texas are not being fingerprinted. And yet these individuals can act with impunity. Uh, really stings the migrant community in particular. They were very specific that you could not engage in any criminal behavior or risk deportation. Lopez's advocacy for legislative changes reflects broader sentiments within the community with calls for revisions to immigration policies to hold individuals accountable for criminal behavior. The absence of fingerprinting protocols for asylum seekers upon arrival has raised questions about ensuring public safety while maintaining a welcoming stance toward migrants. Lopez's proposal for carve-outs in the Welcoming City Ordinance aims to strike a balance between compassion for those seeking refuge and safeguarding communities from potential threats. The case of Hernandez underscores the complexities of immigration policy and its intersection with public safety concerns. His alleged involvement in multiple crimes, including theft and attack, highlights the need for robust mechanisms to address criminal behavior regardless of immigration status. The fact that Hernandez was residing in a migrant shelter at the time of his arrest further underscores the challenges in balancing humanitarian assistance with ensuring accountability. Moreover, the decision to deny Hernandez pre-trial release reflects judicial recognition of the severity of his offenses and the potential risk he poses to the community. The judge cited his pattern of attacking victims from trains, indicating a concerning trend of predatory behavior that necessitates stringent measures to prevent further harm. Looking ahead, Hernandez's upcoming court date on April 10 will be a pivotal moment in determining accountability and delivering justice for the victims. It will also serve as a reminder of the imperative to address systemic issues surrounding immigration policy and public safety. As communities grapple with these challenges, there is a growing consensus on the need for comprehensive reforms that prioritize both humanitarian values and the safety and well-being of all residents. Chicago's Sanctuary City Policy since former Mayor Lori Lightfoot designated Chicago as a sanctuary city in 2021, the influx of migrants into the city has surged, with hundreds arriving weekly. Lightfoot's welcoming city policy shields undocumented migrants from being turned over to federal immigration authorities by law enforcement if they are arrested for a crime. However, Chicago Alderman Ray Lopez has proposed reversing this policy 
to address rising concerns about crime. Lopez's proposal aims to send a clear message that certain behaviors are unacceptable in society. He advocates for the threat of deportation for individuals engaged in serious offenses like gang activity, drug trafficking, or body work. Lopez believes that incorporating deportation consequences into the city's approach can serve as a deterrent against criminal behavior while still maintaining a welcoming environment with defined parameters. And I think we need to send the message loud and clear that there are certain things that are unacceptable in our society. In gang, drugs, prostitution, or anything else more egregious, you know, hopefully that will deter some of the bad behavior we're seeing. If they do commit a crime and they are caught, police will arrest them and they would be charged. That's not enough, you don't think? I don't think that's enough. I think it's very fair to have concerns. I think this isn't the way to address it. And I do think that we need the federal government to help, but we don't need ICE. We can still be welcoming, but we can also welcome with parameters. They rob us, they harass us. 19 aldermen support Lopez's proposed ordinance, which he plans to introduce at the next city council meeting. The ordinance seeks to reevaluate Chicago's sanctuary city policy in light of public safety concerns and the strain on city resources. By incorporating deportation consequences for serious offenses, Lopez aims to strike a balance between welcoming migrants and addressing community safety concerns. The proposal underscores the complexities of immigration policy and its intersection with public safety. It reflects ongoing debates about how cities should navigate their roles in accommodating migrants while safeguarding the interests and well-being of local residents. Revisiting Chicago's Welcoming City Policy In 2021, then-Mayor Lori Lightfoot's decision to designate Chicago as a sanctuary city through the Welcoming City Policy marked a significant shift in the city's approach to immigration enforcement. However, Amid rising concerns about crime and lawlessness around immigrant shelters, Southwest Side Alderman Ray Lopez is advocating for the restoration of certain exclusions from the policy. By removing so-called carve-outs from the city's welcoming city legislation, then-Mayor Lori Lightfoot two years ago fulfilled her campaign vow to stop Chicago police personnel from cooperating with immigration agents. A Southwest Side Alderman is now advocating for the restoration of those exclusions after volunteering the field house at Gage Park to house over 300 refugees. By doing this, police would be able to work with U.S. ICE agents in specific situations to put an end to what Alderman Ray Lopez refers to as lawlessness around immigration shelters. We have 20,221 migrants in the city of Chicago right now. Uh, are, are, are sympathetic to the plight of these migrants. It's an untenable situation. Chicago just does not have the resources. A woman breastfeeding her children in a tent outside in November. They are coming here for the Democratic National Convention. They've come here three times for fundraisers and no one brings it up ever. Lopez is taking matters into his own hands because he is dissatisfied with the city's response, even if it means working with immigration and customs enforcement in a small number of cases. Being a welcoming city is the symbolism that brought this humanitarian crisis to our doorstep, so symbolism has a real impact, the speaker stated. We must demonstrate our willingness to be compassionate, but within reasonable bounds. The end of a six-year battle by immigrant rights supporters, spanning two mayoral administrations, was the 41-8 to 8 vote in January 2021 that eliminated exceptions to cooperating with federal immigration officers. One of the eight no votes cast that day was Lopez. The head of the campaign, Alderman Carlos Ramirez Rosa, is currently the floor leader for Mayor Brandon Johnson's city council. It was not possible to get in touch with Ramirez Rosa on Tuesday. Neither could Johnson's deputy chief of staff, Cristina Pachion Zayas, nor the head of the Committee on Immigrant and Refugee Rights, Alderman Andre Vasquez. During the lengthy discussion that preceded the vote, those who want to speak cautioned that doing away with the exclusions would only worsen the already alarmingly high rate of violent crime. In essence, we are inviting criminals to come live in our city. What better location to go if you are an illegal immigrant who has committed a felony or are on the run than Chicago? On that day, Alderman Anthony Napolitano stated, Lopez concurred that providing havens for gang members and violent criminals would only worsen the carnage on Chicago streets. 
That was back when he said that the bill that eliminated the exceptions was being rammed down our throats for a headline, using fear tactics and political buffoonery to get this passed. What this law accomplishes is it affords those few people the same compassion that you purport to wish to provide to those who are here illegally, striving to live moral lives, improve Chicago, and improve the lives of their families. That is incorrect. The undocumented community does not want those groups to be lumped together, Alderman Lopez asserted. He further questioned, why are we keeping them here if they don't want to be here? Providing sanctuary to those who commit acts of crime in our communities is inappropriate and raises valid concerns about safety and accountability. Texas Governor Abbott's Drop-Off Policy Texas Governor Greg Abbott's controversial drop-off policy, initiated in April of this year, has sparked nationwide debate and raised questions about the treatment of asylum seekers and the role of state governments in immigration policy. The policy, which involves transporting migrants to cities outside of Texas, aims to protest President Joe Biden's immigration policies and address the challenges posed by increasing numbers of asylum seekers at the southern border. Origins and Objectives of the Policy Governor Abbott's decision to implement the drop-off policy was prompted by his dissatisfaction with the Biden administration's handling of immigration issues, particularly its intention to lift the Title 42 order, which restricted asylum seekers' entry into the U.S. during the COVID-19 pandemic. Abbott's office has justified the program as a response to the perceived failure of federal immigration policies, arguing that it is necessary to protect Texans and Americans from potential risks posed by uncontrolled immigration. Under the drop-off policy, Abbott has targeted cities with sanctuary policies, including New York City, Washington, D.C., and Chicago. These cities have policies in place that limit cooperation with federal immigration authorities and provide certain protections to undocumented immigrants. By sending migrants to these cities, Abbott aims to draw attention to what he perceives as the negative consequences of sanctuary policies and to pressure local governments to change their approach to immigration enforcement. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot has responded to Abbott's policy by reaffirming the city's commitment to providing support and assistance to migrants and refugees. Mayor Lori Lightfoot sending a letter to Texas Governor Greg Abbott urging him to stop sending migrants here to Chicago. We have yet to hear from anybody in an official capacity from Texas. That's unacceptable. When we have people come to our city, no matter their country of origin, no matter their circumstances. Mayor Lightfoot says the city and other agencies are housing and feeding the new arrivals and treating them with dignity and respect. But let me also say this, shame on Governor Abbott. Despite initial challenges, including a lack of prior notification to local officials, the city has worked to coordinate services and accommodations for becoming migrants. However, Mayor Lightfoot has emphasized the need for better communication and coordination between state and local authorities to ensure that communities are adequately prepared to respond to the arrival of migrants. The implementation of Abbott's policy has raised concerns about the welfare of migrants and the capacity of receiving cities to provide essential services. In Chicago, the arrival of migrants in suburban areas without prior notification has highlighted the need for improved communication and collaboration between different levels of government. Additionally, there are concerns about the politicization of immigration issues and the potential impact on migrant communities, who may be subjected to further uncertainty and instability. As Abbott's policy continues to unfold, it raises broader questions about the role of state governments in immigration enforcement and the need for comprehensive immigration reform at the federal level. The challenges faced by cities like Chicago underscore the importance of proactive planning and coordination to address the needs of migrants and refugees effectively. Moving forward, policymakers must prioritize humanitarian concerns while also ensuring public safety and upholding the rule of law. Abbott's Busing Program The influx of over 20,000 migrants into Chicago since the initiation of Texas Governor Greg Abbott's busing program has transformed a political maneuver into a humanitarian crisis. 
what began as a strategic move to highlight border cities challenges with surging migrant numbers has rapidly evolved compelling southern border governments and charities to transport migrants to immigration friendly cities like chicago this analysis explores the multifaceted impact of abbott's busing program on chicago shedding light on the challenges faced by both migrants and the city's infrastructure Chicago, ill-prepared for the sudden influx of migrants, grapples with strained resources and overwhelmed social services. Despite the establishment of temporary shelters in abandoned buildings across the city, thousands of migrants remain without adequate accommodation, resorting to sleeping in police stations or outdoors, including at O'Hare International Airport. With most migrants hailing from Venezuela and lacking familial ties or financial resources, the city's efforts to provide support are stretched to their limits. Abbott's busing program, part of his Operation Lone Star Border Security Initiative, has resulted in over 13,500 migrants being transported to Chicago via charter buses since August 2022. The substantial financial investment required for this endeavor underscores its magnitude and impact. While Abbott's actions have drawn criticism and debate, they have undeniably altered the national discourse on immigration, compelling governments across the country to confront the realities of mass migration and advocate for federal intervention and assistance. The repercussions of Abbott's busing program extend beyond Chicago, prompting a nationwide call for organized responses and federal support. The city has already housed nearly 96,000 migrants and more buses are expected to arrive over the next few days. Tens of thousands of migrants continue to be bused from the southern border to Chicago, and the Illinois governor has had enough. Republican governor of Texas is sending migrants by air from the border to Chicago. Do you understand how, how raggedy and how evil that is? Cities unaccustomed to managing large migrant populations now grapple with the visible presence of migrants in public spaces, highlighting the need for coordinated efforts to address their needs. The shift in discourse from border cities to interior cities underscores the interconnectedness of immigration issues and the imperative of collective action at the federal level. Minal Giri, chair of the Immigrant Child Health Initiative at the Illinois chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, emphasizes the profound impact of migration on individuals' mental and physical health. Many migrants arriving in Chicago, particularly families with children, have endured perilous journeys, leaving lasting scars on their well-being. Addressing the humanitarian dimensions of the crisis requires a comprehensive approach that prioritizes access to health care, social services, and mental health support for migrant populations. As Chicago grapples with the ramifications of Abbott's busing program, there is a growing consensus among policymakers, activists, and healthcare professionals for federal intervention the unprecedented nature of the crisis demands a coordinated response that transcends partisan divides and prioritizes humanitarian considerations. Adequate federal funding and resources are essential to bolstering local efforts and ensuring the well-being of both migrants and host communities. Chicago's Response to Abbott's Migrant Chicago's status as a sanctuary city rooted in its history dating back to Mayor Harold Washington's don't ask policy in 1985 has long been a hallmark of its approach to immigration however texas governor greg abbott's decision to send migrants north as a critique of president biden's immigration policies has significantly impacted the city prompting a reevaluation of its capacity to accommodate and support incoming migrants this analysis delves into the complexities of abbott's busing program the factors driving migration to the u.s particularly from Venezuela, and Chicago's response to the unfolding crisis. Abbott's decision to transport migrants to self-declared sanctuary cities like Chicago serves as a political statement against what he perceives as lax immigration policies at the federal level. Republican governor of Texas says this situation has driven him to fly migrants out of his state and into Chicago. Goal to learn about how the Johnson administration plans to govern the city in the middle of a migrant crisis. The migrants with Chicago bearing the responsibility for providing shelter. The county covers health care and the state provides the wraparounds. We have now seen three straight days of record crossings by migrants entering this country. 
Chicago's response to Abbott's migrant busing program reflects the city's resilience and commitment to upholding its sanctuary status amid unprecedented challenges. While the influx of migrants underscores the complexities of immigration policy and the urgent need for humanitarian action, it also highlights the resilience and resourcefulness of migrant communities. As Chicago navigates the evolving migration crisis, it must remain steadfast in its support for vulnerable populations and advocate for comprehensive, compassionate solutions at the local, national, and international levels. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.